Good morning, friends, wherever you are, and welcome to today's Cichlids and Coffee live stream. I appreciate all of you that have been on there for a while now. I've been watching your chat, and I appreciate the early birds. Wherever you are, I hope you're having a, a cup of your favorite, uh, favorite beverage, whatever that might be. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, what do we got here? We got Zen Ginger in the house. Saline Aquatics, some of my wonderful moderators, Brian Hahn, Adam Frankel. Good to see you guys. Angelo in the house. Hey, Lady Diane. Good to see you. I see you have three cups of coffee, so you're uh, you're actually ahead of me by one cup. <laughs> hey, Metzikali Fish Keeper in the house. Is that TA420? NK, am I seeing that right? Let's see here. Be beverage, 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 ATM. Okay. And Dustin Robley in the house. Ben, Ben, he's our man. If he can't talk about fish and drink coffee, no one else can. <laughs> it sounds like a cheer, right? We get some pom poms and we. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Homer. Homer the Clown Trigger. When I first saw that, I thought somebody was talking about a, a clown trigger that was named Homer. That's actually your, uh, that's actually your YouTube handle. All right. <clears throat> very, very cool. Let's see. if Let me go back to Cat Sailors in the house. And Michael's here. Hey, Michael. Good, good seeing you. And let's see here. If I, if I miss you, I'm sorry. You know, sometimes. The old eyes just uh, kind of skip over and all right. Hey, I appreciate all of you being here. And let's um, let's see here. What should we do first? Let let's do the uh, let's go ahead and do the official start to the live stream. All right, very good. Now it's official. <laughs> so let me uh, do a few quick little shout-outs. First of all, a quick shout-out to channel sponsor Cunningham Tropicals, who is still offering 15% uh, off on fish and 10% off on dry goods, including his own custom-made fish food. So be sure to check that out. And that's at Cunningham Tropicals. Thank you for uh, your support there, Josh. And also a very big shout out to all of you who support the channel by being a member of the Garage Gang. And I'm talking about the Patreon, Patreon supporters who helped me to do things like what I did this weekend. Not this weekend, but two days ago, I was able to finally get the uh, f the the uh, 40 amp plug-in on the side of the house. It was about 350 bucks for the full installation, but it was done by a licensed electrician, so that was good. So now I can plug my generator in, so if there's a power outage, I don't have to worry about my fish room. I could just fire up the generator, and a lot of that comes from, comes from your support by watching the videos, super chatters, subscribers, and also my Patreon, my Patreon Garage Gang members. So big shout out to all of you. Thank you so much for that. And if you'd like to pick up some, uh, some channel swag like tees, and it's almost getting back into uh, tank top weather, but uh, so maybe, maybe it's a little bit too warm now for the, uh, for the hoodies. But check out the, uh, the Teespring store. And you can pick up mugs, coffee mugs, and, and all that really helps the channel. And one last way you can help the channel, and this will be the last commercial, I promise. One last way you can help the channel is to use the Amazon link. And by the Amazon link, what I mean is when you go to Amazon, you log on to Amazon or go to the URL, amazon.com slash shop slash Ben Ochart. That'll take you to my to my uh, Amazon store, which has all my recommended 
fish keeping products, but also you can jump out of there and do your regular Amazon shopping. And because you went there with the link, it actually gives a small percentage to the channel and doesn't cost you anything extra. So it's a very cool way to, uh, to support the channel. There you go. Paid some bills. Got through the commercials okay. Whip's World in the house. Hey, Whip. CPs and Hamps and who else? Bob H. is here. Long time. Yeah, long time, Ben. Always glad to see you. Your son's baseball season has started. Yes, it has. And uh, hey, Crows Aquatics in the house. Hey, Crows. I do try and keep my live streams free of, uh, of sports, uh, politics, religion. But I will say this. The uh, Red Sox have a tremendous facility in Florida. I got to visit it last week. I got a behind-the-scenes uh, tour with my son. And what they have going on there is absolutely amazing, including computer and uh, technology that would blow your mind, blow your mind. Uh, but any, anyway, the, the, the setup I saw was a $300,000 uh, setup, like a pitching machine setup that will show you the full body of the pitcher on the mound with a release point on the ball exactly where that pitcher releases the ball in real life. So it has a moving hole on the computer screen that releases the ball from the exact place that particular pitcher releases the ball. For those of you familiar with baseball, you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely amazing. And um, anyway, you can dial in any pitcher you want and see any one of their pitchers and work on that. Three hundred thousand uh, dollar setup, and anyway, enough of that. Enough about sports. My trip down to Fort Myers was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed it. And Jerry says, "Go Sox!" That's right. I was actually communicating with Jerry from the facility, and because I know he's a he's a diehard Sox fan. So, all right. So let's see here. I'm not, you know. Uh, I'm not sure, Homer. I think it would. I think it would. If you're talking about the Amazon link, I think it would. I think uh, the URL would. would. If it doesn't, let me know, will you? Just write to me at ben.o.cichlid, ben.o.cichlid at Gmail, and let me know. And I, w I would actually like to know that. So let's see here. Whips World praying for his Steelers. <laughs> I did my water changes uh, two days ago and yesterday. I think I'm pretty much caught up on my... I do need to do a water change on my little five-gallon uh, Pleco tank. I mean, that takes like, you know, two minutes. But all the other ones, I, I started using that a pump, an actual pump, to get water out of the bigger tanks, and that's made, made it a lot easier. It still takes a long time to fill them. And when you fill up large tanks, of course, you have to be checking the temperature because, you know, your water, hot water can change. It can, it can go down. It, you know, again, someone else in the house can be doing something. So in a real long fill, uh, you know, I've got to stop and check the temp, make sure everything's okay. But uh, this, one's, this one's changed. The 210's changed. Interestingly enough, I didn't see a lot of violence. Usually, uh, after a water change in an African cichlid tank, it fires them up, and they like start claiming territory and doing breeding dances. They get like breeding colors and crazy stuff, right? They start flashing. They do all kinds of stuff. And I didn't see a lot of that after this last water change. So I'm not sure if, it's, uh, if that's a good or a bad thing, but uh, uh, I know also that if you, if you hit a tank with a pH, that might be a little a little off. I know that can cause some some irritation, some flashing. So maybe it's a good thing. Uh, not not really sure, but we'll see. Nick Garcia in the house. Nick, thanks for joining us today. And today's topic is going to be all about color. And by the way, 
if you do a super chat and I miss you, please don't be upset at me. It just means that I'm not looking at the chat. I'm looking at it now. And <clears throat> we had some great super chats last week. They really helped a lot. Big shout out to super chatters. So today's topic is about color. And very often what sparks the topics for these live streams are comments that I get underneath my videos. By the way, uh, I'm sure you would have said something by now if there was a problem. But how is the um, how's the audio and the video? Let me know. Just give me a quick audio video check. And let me know how that sounds and looks. And that would be comforting. <laughs> so I get comments under my videos. And very often that's what, what will spark. A, uh, that's what will spark a topic. And today's topic was uh, was definitely sparked by a comment that that is not that uncommon where people are are talking about my fish. Sometimes they ask if I have females in the in the African cichlid tank because the colors can look like breeding dress colors, and and so I started thinking about it. Thank you, Zen Ginger. Thank you for that. Thank you, Whips, and thank you, Brian Park for for that. So hey, price tag, price tag in the house. Good to see you. Hey, GP. Wasn't sure if you're going to make it, my friend. GP's been very busy on the weekends. So, the, the, you know, I've talked about this, this topic. If you, if you did a search on my videos, I think there's what, like 1,200 videos, 1,300 videos. If you search color, if you searched uh, best color, if you, you'd probably see several videos on this topic. I'm going to take a little bit of a different, uh, a different tack this time, and I, we'll start from this angle. What, what would make a fish color down? Like why, why would a fish not be at optimum, optimum color? Now, now keep in mind what is optimum color. Some of us will compare the fish to a, a, a photo we saw on you know on the internet at some you know some vlog or or on youtube not realizing that sometimes those those photos are photoshopped they are color enhanced they're color saturated and what it gives us is a is a bit of a of a false sort of a bar it sets the bar at an almost impossible level what i'm talking about are 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 just good good solid colors and patterns that are, you know, that look good. They look sharp and crisp. And and what what would make a fish actually start to lose that? And I've seen, you know, I've seen fish uh, go through a variety of, of colors. Sometimes, again, after a water change. For those of you who have nimbochromus, and by nimbochromus, of course, I mean the the venusas, right? The fuscos, the Living stone eyes, the polystigmas, the linies, these fish will 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 sometimes go all one solid color and almost lose lose all their pattern. Just go like a a blue or a blue green and and they, they like change like a, they look like a different fish. So we know we know for sure that 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 conditions impact the color of the fish and can change the color of the fish the mood of the fish what what's what's going on right probably at a right at a hormone level is uh is going to impact that fish so from my experience what 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 makes fish color down is probably most obviously is subdominance there's a, a fish that is either very similar in appearance or of the same kind in the aquarium, and they're the shot caller. They're, they're, the, they're the in charge, right? And I've seen, I've seen African cichlids actually color down to the point where they almost look like they have the coloration or the lack of coloration like a female, almost in an effort to be off the radar 
of the aggressive dominant fish. So you'll see, a, a, you know, someone will have a breeding tank. They'll have two males and five females. The dominant male is spectacular. The subdominant is almost washed out. Or the subdominant is challenging for the top spot and very fired up, right? So that can go either way. So subdominance and aggression, which sometimes go hand in hand, if you have a fish that's being overly aggressive, again, the fish are going to, they, they're going to try and blend in with the scenery. They're going to not want to stand out. They don't, they're not going to want to draw attention to themselves. And so they're going to color down. So one of the reasons for dull fish, subdominance. Another reason, another reason is, and of course this is kind of an obvious one, is, is illness. If that fish is fighting something off, and maybe they have a parasite that's, that's started to, that they're fighting off, that they're battling with. Maybe they have a, some type of a virus. Sometimes, I mean, fish get sick just like people, right? You can have a fish that's, that's under stress. Because of that, their immune system was compromised. Just like a human immune system, right? When you're under stress, you can get sick easier. That fish then has something that's been dormant in their body that now starts to take more hold, and now their resources are dedicated more towards the fighting off of this disease and less towards flashing color, and they sort of take themselves out of the, uh, you know, out of the out of the the breeding pool, right? And they sort of go off and and recover and conserve their you know their their energy to healing so if a fish is ill or fighting something off you'll also see that i also i'm experiencing right now uh an example of that with with my uh i believe my sand diver and to some degree my gar my malawi gar are are experiencing an age issue. I think that when a fish gets older, when a fish starts to put on some years and they sort of have gone past that peak period in their life, they start to actually color down. They, they start to become, uh, you know, less willing to fight for a dominant position in the aquarium. And they start to want to become more part of the background. And I think I'm seeing that with my sand diver who, Six months ago, I was posting pictures on Instagram because he was spectacular. Uh, nine months ago, I was posting pictures of the gar. And now they've both sort of taken on a little bit more gray and a little bit less color. Now, as they get older, as they get weaker, you can also have things that they were carrying around inside of them, such as intestinal parasites. and and it's it's more the rule than the exception that fish are carrying things around just like we do. We are carrying around parasites. We're carrying around, you know, all types of intestinal things that we keep in check because we're healthy. When we get, when we don't get enough sleep, when we're under stress, when we're, you know, when we're, we're running on fumes, we're running on, on Red Bull and coffee for too long, those things are going to, start to become more of an issue. And that happens with the fish. If they're under stress, if they're uh, being picked on, if, they're, if they've gotten old and a little weaker, they're going to start to uh, have these things manifest and they're going to lose color. So just some things to keep in mind. Now, more things. I've got about 10 of them here for you. You know me and... and and lists and tips. Frankie in the house. Hey, Frankie. Good to see you. So, we also need to talk about water conditions. This one's pretty obvious, right? 
And, and this just means that the water isn't being kept in, in the shape it should be kept in. Now, that doesn't mean exclusively clear water, right? Pristine clear water, because pristine clear water can also, can not necessarily be healthy water. So, does that water contain vital nutrients, vital minerals and trace minerals that are necessary for the health of the fish, minerals that they are only getting from the water? Now, for a while there, there was a lot of chatter on, on YouTube about water changes and do we do water changes, not do water changes, and that sort of thing. And, and my, my, conclu- my, my, my thoughts on that were a heavily planted, lightly stocked aquarium can go for very long periods of time without a water change and probably do okay. The plants are doing a lot of the, a lot of the filtration for you. Probably a uh, top off a couple times a month, and maybe even a, a a water change every two months. You might be okay, and 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 just twenty percent, maybe. But you start getting into 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 tanks with fish that are massive waste producers that require a lot of food, including live food. Like you're getting into uh, or frozen foods like you know shrimp and and krill rather, and 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 things like bloodworms and things like this you're you're going to you're going to want to um, swap out some of that water especially if there's no plants like in the large cichlid tanks now again i know the argument why don't you put some plants in the sump why don't you put some plants in the hang on back yes you can do that but you really need an aquarium that has a lot of plants to start to make a noticeable difference in ammonia and ultimately in nitrate consumption. <clears throat> so water quality. So are you keeping up with water changes? And are those water changes done in a way that is, I mean, back to stress, are they being done in a way that's not stressful for the fish? Are you shocking them with temperature changes? Are you shocking them with pH changes? Right? So are you conditioning the water correctly? So these are all things that have to be taken into the mix and will impact the color of the fish. And probably most importantly, are you adding nutrients? Like I started using Vitachem. I add Vitachem. I dose for the full aquarium after a water change. In my Malawi tanks, I'll use uh, Malawi, Malawi lake salts, and those are salts that add trace minerals. They're not aquarium salt or epsom salt or kosher salt they are just something different they're called salts but what they are are trace minerals the ones you can get from Seacam, the ones from fritz uh, those emulate the ratio of trace minerals that are in the rift lakes and i believe you can buy them for uh, for tanganyikans you can buy separate ones from malawi uh, cichlids. So, adding to the water nutrients that that can help with the health that can get a little bit expensive. I mean, it takes it takes a big dose of Vitacam to to dose a three hundred gallon. But I think in the long run, I think in the long run, you're going to get a better result. It it also takes a lot of Malawi salt for a three hundred gallon. I don't do the full dose. Okay, full disclosure, I just put a couple heaping tablespoons, uh, you know, dissolved and drop it in. I don't, I don't do a, a full dose of, of the Malawi salt. Because why? Because it, it's, it's, it's expensive stuff. It just, it, but to have some in there is a lot better than not. Nick Garcia in the house. Vitamin A. Yeah, the, the flamingos, talking about the pink and the flamingos. You want to see some pink, some pink flamingos, my friend, go to the Nashville Zoo. Right when you come into the zoo, there's like a you know, like a hundred 
of the most pink flamingos I've ever seen. But uh, vitamin A. Now we're getting we're getting a little bit we're getting into uh, nutrition. Now, unfortunately, there's too much nutrition or fish food out there that is loaded with dyes, fillers, wheat products, soys, uh, genetically modified soy, uh, things of this nature. Now, granted, you do need some binders to hold pellets together, but you don't need as much as is used by some of these manufacturers. So you start getting into you start getting into the quality of the food. Now, I mean, you know, from the shirt I'm wearing, I'm a big proponent of of North Fin. I also love uh, the food that comes out of Extreme. I'm a fan of uh, of several food makers, Pisces Energetics. I like them. Uh, I love Sarah. I think Sarah puts a lot of research into their food. So checking your food, make sure it's not loaded with fillers. Uh, make sure that wheat and soy is not super high in the ingredients. Make sure that there are some, some whole ingredients in there, right? Whole tilapia, whole whatever it is that you... And then making sure that the mix is right for your kind of fish. If you have mabuna, be sure you've got some veg in there, right? A lot of veg. Uh, certain fish are very high protein. Your predator haps need the protein. I give them a mix. I provide a mix. I, I don't think that uh, that one. You know my philosophy, right? I don't think that one food, one food company has has it one hundred percent totally figured out. So I give them a mix. The blend I provide has some veg in there. It has uh, extreme. It has Sarah. It it has North Fin. I have a variety of size of pellets in the tank behind me. I'm mixing it with a little bit of garlic to try and encourage the, uh, the sand diver to eat. So, and I do with my, with my, with almost all the tanks except the African cichlids, they do get worms. And I use some of the black, black worms from super cichlids for my South and Central American. Uh, fish the uh, these guys behind me they, they get they get frozen krill so quality food is going to have an impact on the fish and i don't think that you should necessarily concern yourself with food that promises to color your fish like some foods have coloring agents in them that will that that actually dye your fish right uh, they change that they, they they sort of like color the fish i don't i don't necessarily mean that i mean just good quality food right now look for fillers look for dyes and make sure that the ratio of what is needed with regards to proteins and vegetables are being met by your fish and supplement minerals and vitamins for an optimum result with color right now another Another factor that is kind of subtle and might not be missed is, do, are you providing those fish with enough oxygen? Are they working a little bit too hard to fill their oxygen requirements? You'll know this if they're moving their mouths a lot, they're working their mouths a lot, even if they're swimming at the bottom and, and, and middle of the tank, if they're moving their mouths a lot, it doesn't mean that they're trying to say something. It means that, that they're working too hard to get oxygen. Yes, there might be gill flukes. There might be some parasites on their gill plates. I understand that. Normally, I have found that it's a low oxygen situation. All you need to do is add an air stone or put an output from a filter like a power head or a wave maker or an internal filter or a canister make sure it's breaking up make sure the out the output is breaking up the surface a little bit you'll be fine but that can if they're putting a lot of their energy and resources into trying to get enough oxygen that's going to impact color that makes a lot of sense 
So watch for that. M and C Aquatics in the house. Let's see, Andy in the house. Hope you're having a good day, Andy. Checking out the stream here, or checking out the chat. And we'll get over to your questions in a second. All right. Now, another point to consider that could be affecting the color, vitality, the health of your fish. Keep in mind that if they're healthy, they... They want to eat. If they're healthy, they, they, they want to breed. They, they want to do the things that fish do, right? So another thing that might be affecting that is water circulation. What are the preferences of the kind of fish that you have? There's some fish that love living in a lot of water movement. There are other fish like, like discus and betta that don't like a lot of water movement. And that could be a source of stress for them. So take a look at where that species originates from and, and start looking into whether or not that fish is a fish that is from an area that has rapid moving water. Like the name would imply, a hill stream loach, I suspect, comes from an area where there's a lot of movement, right? There's water movement. So you'd want to create stream-like conditions, whereas other fish, especially fish that are flat and tall, angelfish, right? Uh, even to some degree, uh, stragatus and eye biters, these flat, skinny fish, they don't like to be pushed around by a lot of circulation. So putting in a, uh, you know, a 3,500 gallon per hour wave maker might not be a good idea in that tank. Just things to consider here, okay? Now, what else? Aquarium size. Is the fish that you're in, or is the, is the aquarium the fish is in, suitable? In other words, like for example, a Malawi trout. A Malawi trout is a fish that is a deep water predator that is an open water they don't hang around the, the 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 shore that much they're out there in the middle of it and they'll live their life in 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 deep open waters you put that malawi trout in a 55 gallon that's not going to really allow them to really engage the afterburners right they're really not going to be able to do what they're sort of designed to do which is really dart and shoot periods of time. Now, even in a seven-foot aquarium like the one behind me, my Malawi trout, I feel, doesn't really have as much room as they should have in an ideal world. A lot better than being in a five-foot or four-foot across tank, but still. So if that fish was in a 55 or 75-gallon, that fish would not be as certainly as happy and and as a byproduct of that probably not as colorful as they should be so tank size could play into this okay now how about water turnover certainly an aquarium with a lot of plants you probably don't need as much turnover since the plants are doing a lot of the absorption but in an aquarium like the three to my left here, I'm looking at the red tear redecorating his tank and moving mouthfuls of substrate towards the front, a tank that has no plants, a little bit of hornwort that I threw in that floats around. My 210, South and Central American, is just rocks, driftwood, and fake plants. The one behind me is just rocks and fake plants. So those tanks the, require more water change, more water turnover because they also have fish that eat a lot and, and produce a tremendous amount of ammonia. The planted tank right in front of me doesn't necessarily have that need. So what's the water turnover? What's the filtration? And how is it dialed in to the particular kind of fish that you're keeping? Again, we're talking about what? The fluid situation, all the moving parts, and all of that. And when you dial that in, 
correctly, you're going to get a more vibrant, a more vibrant fish. I mean, really, I mean, that's just the bottom line. So you dial in water turnover, nutrients, minerals, tank size. Now, we, we can't also ignore lighting. I mean, let's face it, some lighting enhances color. Some lighting washes out color. Some lighting is too, uh, too yellow, too white, too red, too green, too blue. Some lights have adjustments where you can dial it into to your, to where, where you feel it, it, it brings out the best natural-looking color. Some lights just bomb the tank with white light and kind of wash everything out. So lighting has a lot to do with it. And what's, if you've used various kinds of lighting, what's been your experience? Go ahead and share it in the chat. What's been your experience with, with lighting? What lighting have you noticed brings out the best color in your fish? And is it lighting that you had to adjust, or was it lighting right out of the box? Right? So I'd be curious to know about that. As you know, I have, I have uh, a lot of aquarium co-op, some of their easy plant lights in here. I have the a Best Fish programmable lighting. Uh, I have several kinds of lights. The majority of them are aquarium co-op. But let me know. Let me know what, what light you've had the best success with. So I think I've touched on almost all the points with regards to um, bringing out color. Kendall G. in the house. Good morning to you, Kendall G. Christopher Junkin? Christopher Junkin, I keep a lot of little fish in big tanks. You know, I'm hearing a lot of that these days from folks talking about how they're, they're taking their 150-gallon and turning it into a uh, you know, a planted community, and, and I think that looks awesome. I think it looks awesome. You know, a heavily planted, large tank with, you know, 35 cardinal tetras and, you know, 50 rasboras, and I, I think it looks awesome. I think it looks awesome. You know, whatever, what, whatever you prefer. So, let me take up some of your questions here. Let's 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 look in let's look at the chat and see uh what the heck's on your mind. Big shout out to my moderators who who keep an eye on things like the chat, making sure that we always keep it family friendly. <laughs> Thank you to my moderators. Let's take a look here at the chat. I'm going to go back in the chat a little bit. TA240 says that they add Vitachem in my food. Well, that's, a, that's an interesting way to get them to take it in with Garlic Guard. That's actually not a, not a, not a bad, not a bad uh, suggestion. Well, you know, you're wondering about whether or not it's the right way to administer it. I, I, the bottom line, and, and this is the answer to so many questions I get under my videos and on Facebook and with emails, the, the answer is uh, how, are the, how do the fish look? You know, how do, the, how do, they, how do they look like, look like they're doing? I mean, if, they, if the fish look like they're doing great, better than they were before you started doing that then then yeah yeah you know it's i mean the fish will tell you the fish will answer your question so if they're doing great you like what you're seeing the color's good yeah i would say uh i would say continue continue with that homer 
the clown trigger. For me, it is more important that I get the solid particles out of my tank and in the roller filter, so less pollution with my messy eaters. Now, for those of you not familiar with a, a roller, there is something you can put into a sump that is that the water will go through and it it can be it can be rolled either manually or is rolled on a timer and it is pulling particles out of the water goes through it and it's like a fine filter like a pre-filter of sorts and it pulls the particles out and it rolls up so what does that do compare that to a canister filter where the junk that is pulled out is not going to be seen, but is still part of the ecosystem. You see the difference? Same thing with a hang on back, same thing with a sponge filter. Until they're cleaned, anything that's pulled out of the water column is actually still a part of the ecosystem because it's just, it's just been moved out of the aquarium and put into a filter. A roller removes the particles from the ecosystem and then rotates and rolls up and provides fresh, clean material for the water to fall through. So, so Homer is using something that is uh, extremely, extre it's like, a, it's like a, a pre filter times 100 or a pre-filter that never needs to be rinsed. And yes, they can be expensive. And yes, you have to, have to have the right kind of setup, the right kind of sump. But um, they're very cool, very, very cool. And again, the example I've used over and over again, you've got $5,000 worth of coral and, and, and saltwater fish. You're going to put, you know, you're going to put a reactor. You're going to put a roller. You're going to put everything you can get your hands on in that sum because uh, you want that you want that to be uh, taken care of so and some people have complained about canisters being nitrate factories i haven't found that to be the case the waste that is collected by a filter i un if i understand this correctly over time becomes neutral in other words, it loses its ability to pollute over time. It just becomes gunk, gunky, that's all, mom and gunk. But it stops being toxic. But it does remain part of the ecosystem in filters that don't remove it like a roller. All right, let's see here. Bonnie Coasters, hello, just started watching you, and I have learned so much. Great topics and coverage. Thank you, Bonnie. I appreciate that. I always appreciate and uh, share it with your friends. Uh, people, I don't know why I'm, I'm kind of a secret. The, uh, I did a search the other day. I went anonymously on YouTube, and this might surprise you, and I would love to hear what you have to say about this. I went on YouTube anonymously, and I searched. African cichlids, tropical fish, South and Central American cichlids, water changes, canister filters, all these different searches, and I didn't come up. It took me quite a while before I found a recommended video of mine. I don't know why that is. Maybe I've been stupid in how I've set up my tags, or I don't know what. Um, but anyway. It's up to you, you folks, you gals. Share the channel, and I think with word of mouth, we might we might get a, a better a better result. So, at any rate, great questions, great comments, and I think that might be uh, getting back to the Vitacam comment. That might be a great way to administer it. And just keep an eye on your fish. Your fish will tell you. Let's take a look at some more of your comments. If you have a question, now's the time to drop it in. All 
It seems like Homer is a fan of Sarah. I am a big fan of Sarah. I have a, if one of the, um, if one of the moderators would like to share, I did an interview with representatives of Sarah, and it was very, very eye-opening. I'm cruising the chat. I'm not just staring off in the distance. MNC Aquatics, Ben needs a 450. <laughs> Oh, boy. I think so. I think you're right. All right, let's see here. So, Angelo, I did... I guess you had problems with the Aquarium Co-op. Aquarium Co-op will replace the light, by the way almost immediately. Uh, I haven't had a problem with mine, but the Abess Fish is a great light. Fully programmable, runs off of an app on your phone, and I can, I can, um, you know, I can do sunset and sunrise with it so the fish are not shocked by an immediate floodlight, right? So I like that a lot. So, uh, yeah, it's a good light. And you know what? I have no complaints about the, the Higer lights and uh, you know the the lights I was using before. I I really had no com real complaint about them. The Higer lights, the um, I thought were good. I used um, oh what, beams work. I used beams work for years. It still works. It's just sitting here in the garage. But beams work great. Great lights, solid lights. So um, no complaints about those lights really. All right. Any other questions? Go ahead and hit me. I see a question about a comment on benefit. Yeah, but Ben, it breaks. So Saline Aquatics is saying that the um, what is in the canister will be broken down by the back by the beneficial bacteria. So would that mean then? That in a, a system that is allowing waste to get into the filters and then holding it there, that that would be a more nutritious system for the development of beneficial bacteria compared to something like, like a roller that is removing a lot of it in an effort to uh, reduce you know, ammonia consumption. So there's a couple of ways. So you, you've got, again, we've got a lot of moving parts, right? We have a, a very fluid situation. On the one hand, your beneficial bacteria needs food. This is the topic that comes up very often when people are setting up an aquarium. All right, I, I put bacteria in a bottle in the aquarium. I uh, brought over some media from a tank. When can I add fish? Now. Right now, <laughs> that beneficial bacteria that you brought over, that bacteria in a bottle that you brought over, needs the waste that's going to be produced by the food you're feeding the fish. Don't bring over 100 fish. Bring over three, four, then another three or four in a couple of weeks. But you're only going to have as much beneficial bacteria as you can support with the amount of food that you're providing, which is the form of, which is directly proportionate to how heavy you're feeding, right? So keep that in mind. A lot of moving parts. It's a fluid situation. It's like somebody tells me, Ben, will I get a better beneficial bacteria result if I put three canisters, three small canisters, or one big canister? or one big canister and two hang-on bags, you're going to get the amount of beneficial bacteria that you can feed. And it's going to be spread out over five filters, or it's going to be in one filter and in the substrate. But you're not going to get more than you can feed. So now, that being said, 
I do like the idea of multiple filters because you get the backup and the redundancy in the event one breaks or while you're cleaning one, the other one can keep running. So a lot of moving parts, a fluid situation. All right. Any other questions? Thank you, TA240 and K. Give this thumbs a give this video a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Adam Frankel, I've been using Cichlid Trace for years in my tanks. Fish color is great. I'm going to start using what? Lakeum? La Lakeum? I'm not familiar with that, Adam. Lakeum. Send me a, send me a, a little information on that, Adam, to ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com. I'd love to hear what you're talking about. Now, keep in mind, and you know I'm, you know what I, you probably know what I'm going to say, Adam. You've been watching the channel long enough. If things are working, uh, be a little reluctant to change things. Uh, and if you do make a change, keep a close eye on it. If you notice an improvement, carry on. But if it get, gets a little worse, stop immediately. But, uh, but if it doesn't change things, you know, you might just be wasting money. So just, again, if things are going well, be a little reluctant to make any changes. I know we're always looking at making things better. Medina in the house, Medina Cichlids, thank you for joining us, my friend. MES, beneficial bacteria cannot live in sterile aquarium. Very true. One of the biggest mistakes new fish keepers make, you know what it is. They overclean. I'm going to make this aquarium spotless. So I'm going to go ahead and and uh, stir up all the substrate and do a deep vacuuming and pull out all the decor and s scrub it down and scrub down my filters and fast forward one week, all the fish are dead. And uh, that gets us into the idea that you know what, maybe maybe less is better. So. Certainly, if you have a lot of plants and a lightly stocked tank, less is definitely better. The cichlids with the stripe in the background? Let's see here. Wants to know what is the cichlid with the stripe in the background? Let's take a look at what cichlid you're talking about. Are you talking about the gar? Is it a horizontal stripe, a vertical stripe? Several different kinds of stripes going on there. And uh, not sure of the exact stripe that you're referring to. I'll tell you what, if you take a screenshot and send it to me of the fish you're referring to, to ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com, I'll get back to you and I'll let you know. All right, let's see here. I'm cruising the chat. Horizontal stripe, it's the one with the horizontal stripes. It it might you might be talking about the um the sand diver. It might be the sand diver.
maybe the gar. So many of them have hor horizontal stripes. But yeah, if you send me a, uh, a screenshot, I'll be happy to identify it for you. Medina Cichlids, I won't touch a new tank for a month. You know, that, that I, I think that's a really good idea. And I talked about this, about uh, setting up a new tank in a recent video. Uh, if it hasn't been shared, go ahead and share it already. Uh, the moderators, you can share that link. That last video I put out on starting a new tank, probably the best thing to do, even through the algae or bacteria bloom, is just leave that tank alone. Give it a lot of oxygen, right? And, 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 and don't mess with it, and you'll get there. Uh, people try and mess too much, and they end up with uh, actually interrupting the situation. You want ammonia, you want nitrite in the very beginning to develop and feed your colony of beneficial bacteria. And to this is why you know you you add fish very very slowly. You you condition the tank. You um, you gradually start adding more fish and more waste. Some people in the very beginning will throw in. A dead shrimp. Let a dead shrimp rot in there. So there's you you uh, you know ammonia and nitrate in the beginning, just like an algae bloom and a bacteria bloom. In the th these things are actually a friend of the process. So leave it alone. Give that bacteria the oxygen it needs with surface tension breakup, and and it will come around, and you'll have a healthy tank. Now, in addition to that, I wouldn't do any real super heavy maintenance on a brand new tank until after, let's say, three to six months or later. And by that, what I mean is do the filters and a vacuuming at the same time. Pull out some decor, scrub it, and vacuum. Do these heavy type maintenance steps. I wouldn't do that for six to nine months. Let the bacteria get really, really, really established. Once you have an established tank, you're good. You're good. You can, it's going to have more stability. You can pull out things. You can get away with, with, with things like, you know, like substrate swap outs or crazy stuff like that. Uh, once it's become much more stable, but I wouldn't do that early on because you're dealing with a, a little bit of a fragile ecosystem so let it leave it alone let it let it do its thing let the bacteria populate the walls of the tank the uh the inside walls of your canister of your hang on back of your decor and you'll have a rock solid situation that isn't going to be isn't going to be shaky all right so, everybody, I want to thank all of you for showing up today. If I missed any Super Chats, I'm sorry. I wasn't staring at the, uh, at the live stream that much. But I thank all of you for watching, for giving it a thumbs up, for subscribing, for showing up. And not sure how much content I'm going to get out this weekend because I have my two sons and my future daughter-in-law flying in. <clears throat> They're coming in to meet the new granddaughter. So Uncle Adam and his fiancée, Sophia, coming in from San Francisco. Jason's coming up from Fort Myers, and we're going to have a good old time. The flights start arriving in a couple hours. And uh, as, Denny, as Denny mentioned, Denny Riddell, one of my moderators, you have a very tight family. Yes, I do. Uh, it's family first around here, and, uh, and I'm loving it. So enjoy your family this weekend. Have a wonderful weekend, all of you. Thank you so much for showing up. And I will see you next week at the same time. And watch for some upcoming videos. Not sure what they're going to be about, but stay tuned. I'll come up with something, I'm sure. Certainly, if you have some ideas of what you'd like to see me talk about, share them in the comments under my videos. That's where I get most of my inspiration for upcoming content. Okay? Thank you, my friends. You are the best. You rock. And I'll see you, I'll see you next week.